it's an instinct that if you can't solve a problem you look at the solution within half an hour or yes. one hour right but yeah. uh, like the key to actually learning the intuition like what to think next if you get mm-hmm. stuck is really important and i think if you persist uh, in that way of only solving the problem yourself uh, rather mm-hmm. than looking at solutions then only you can build that intuition level and then it helps to solve any problem like once you get into google you really understand the uh, people around you like all of them are so like literally genius and you for some time also it took me some time to really settle in and understand that uh, so you have that imposter syndrome for about 3 4 months at least i had for more than that and then mm-hmm. once i was settled in to the team once i started uh, like uh, being productive uh mm-hmm. it's about more than a year now and like i'm really settled in oh, my manager and team to be that really great all the folks in the team are so good and the mm-hmm. culture is so good like uh, nobody never ask you like whether you have completed this work or not it's just on you whether you how and when you want to complete the work and mm-hmm. uh the good thing about google is that you can work on anything so i had never imagined that i would work on android I was very pro JavaScript, and I was I was thinking I would work always in JavaScript. So once I got into the team, I worked in like C plus plus, Java, Python, even Android in the last six months. So it's uh, you get to learn a lot of things. You get to learn a lot of things. And you have your own barista in two floors, so you can customize your coffee every day. Uh, so and food is like literally uh, better than five star, I would say. so there's uh, many a times so we think as a team to have a team lunch outside when we get disappointed after having the food out right because the food in google is better hi guys welcome back to our youtube channel i hope you guys are doing good we are back with a new video this video is going to be really important for anyone who is learning coding and want to get into a product based company so watch this video till the end and before moving forward take a moment to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notification for all our upcoming videos so for this session we have a really uh, amazing guest with us harsh Harsh is currently working as a software engineer in Google and he is also a mentor here at AccuJob. In this session we will discuss how he started his journey with Cognizant and then landed a job in Google as a software engineer. He will also be sharing his interview experiences, how his life is at Google now and how you can also crack a product based company. So do make sure you watch the video till the end and uh, let's uh, move right into the video without wasting any further time. uh so hi harsh how how are you hi hi i am good how are you yeah i am also great so harsh can you quickly introduce yourself sure so i am harsh barwada i have about 5 years of experience now in the it industry i passed out in 2018 from a tsc college named st thomas college of engineering and technology from kolkata and i got the job at cognizant as an associate there and mm-hmm. i worked for about 2 years or so in legacy java based system technologies and like i wanted to explore more about javascript so i learned some of it nodejs and react on my own and then i switched to a company called jio which everybody knows so i worked there for about 1 year or so and then i got a call from paypal itself from one of the recruiters uh, from my linkedin profile and then i got into paypal worked there for about Eight months or so. Uh, before that, I got a call from Google. So that's still a, a short journey uh, description. Okay. okay, Harsh. So uh, when you started your journey at Cognizant, uh, that job was a campus placement that you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a campus. Okay. So uh, did that profile require any uh, kind of coding? What was that profile actually? So ironically that was the first year uh, when companies like Cognizant, Wipro and PCS all started taking one small coding rounds in their uh, system before our campus placement rounds uh, before the years they didn't take uh, any coding rounds but only uh, verbal and aptitude test and then you had a interview but uh, we also had a small coding round okay yeah. okay Cool. So, uh, you had computer science in your graduation, right? Uh, I had IT information technology, which is pretty similar to computer science. Which is pretty similar to computer science, only, right? So, uh, when was uh, the time exactly when you started? Uh, you know, uh, 
genuinely preparing for uh, software engineering jobs out there was it uh, in third year or fourth year only or uh, when was it exactly for you when you thought that this is the high time that i should really start preparing for good jobs so i had done an internship at the end of my third year and once i completed that in about uh, june and august apparently i was also starting the preparation for the campus placement because they probably start around august september so mm-hmm. about 3 months before that but i would highly uh, encourage people to start early mm-hmm. and because it yeah, it's better to start early and have a head start okay so you were studying on your own through youtube or uh, was it something it was in college only that you were studying through your subjects so i was mainly following youtube videos and channels uh generally is few of the gate channels because they had good content and just because i was accustomed to java more so i had uh, durga soft video tutorials which are really great for any fresher or any college student they should definitely uh, check those videos there are about 250 such videos in the playlist and they are really core to uh, java so i think i would definitely recommend people who are in college who have like interest in learning java they should start there okay cool great harsh so uh, let's talk a little bit about your experience after publishing right you got a job in geo as a software developer engineer and then after that you were also able to crack paypal so can you share uh, the uh, strategy that you followed to be able to crack these two big companies and uh, just share a little bit about that like how were you able to do that sure so there's a story here that uh, when i was in cognizant about march 2020 so we all know that pandemic started in that month and uh, mm-hmm. due to that so i was working for a client in cognizant called marriott and it's a hotel based client so we were in danger of getting laid off at that time because they didn't have work so we had lost those projects and we were in bench in uh, cognizant so i had taken a call at that time to whether take up javascript as a passion uh and move forward doing that or like go forward with java because i was working with java i took a mm-hmm. bold call i guess there and i like uh, learned java and javascript and probably gave a lot of interviews in startups and using angel test and linkedin and hirest and all those uh, mm-hmm. like portals and probably that gave me a lot of uh, confidence about my knowledge on javascript and uh then i got a offers from few of the companies and ironically one of those was geo it's very difficult to get like a good product by scanning call i think the geo was the only company which was a product based company which had called me based on my cognizant experience so i was lucky to get that call and i was basically planning for those 3 months in the pandemic 3 or 4 months where i had built my resume in such a way that i could show the projects which i was doing on the side posting them live and also doing some open source stuff on the side so that my resume stands out comparatively and that's why i think i get got the call from gio so oh, while you were working at cognizant you were also doing your open source projects uh, side by side and preparing your resume for it got it yeah yeah okay, so uh, okay cool so to land a good product based companies you should also have good projects in your resume and you should you know continue working on them even if you have a job somewhere that will not be enough you will be required to show projects as well yeah yeah definitely okay so uske baad you landed the paypal uh, offer so can you tell a little bit about that as well because that company is obviously uh, one of the dream companies for a lot of people uh, you know especially who are looking to have a career as a coder so can you tell a little bit about that key how was their interview experience how do they select you sure sure so till then till jio i was only focusing on learning dev javascript node.js on development side web dev side but mm-hmm. i knew that if i had to make that next level like the high level product based companies like paypal microsoft amazon i needed to like drill it down in dsa and coding so i like had to choose a path between dsa or move more into dev and then uh, climb the ladder in geo so i took that call of learning like going more into the depth of dsa so i formalized a probably three month plan to actually learn dsa so what i did basically was i uh, 
there's a link called geeks for geeks must do product based company questions so there Achha. are about uh, 250 questions there in easy medium and hard and uh, what i did was that uh, i took all my time first into learning all the concept for all the data structure and algorithms right stack queue language everything first i implemented understood them and implemented them on my own in whatever language i am comfortable so i was comfortable in java so i did it that people can pick up any language it's not a worry like i did in javascript nobody i think codes in javascript so yeah mm-hmm. anybody can write code in any language so once i did uh, that i formalized a plan to basically start solving those problems from must do coding because i saw that those are the foundations of the concepts so the key to that was that i did all the questions on my own like without looking at the solutions i know it's pretty difficult and yeah, like hearing it as well because every i think it's uh, it's an instinct that if you can't solve a problem you look at the solution within half an hour or yes. one hour right but yeah. uh, like the key to actually learning the intuition like what to think next if you get stuck is really important and i think if you persist uh, in that way of only solving the problem yourself Uh, rather mm-hmm. than looking at solutions, then only you can build that intuition level, and then it helps to solve any problem. So uh, what I used to do was I used to uh, solve the question, and if I can't optimize it, I would look at some of the hints uh, in lead code or lead stories. And uh, if I still can't solve the problem, I would look at uh, the discussion sections headings, not the solutions, just the headings that would give us the approach. so that would be a major hint and i think i would solve most of the questions still there if still i wouldn't be able to solve then i would look at the youtube video rather than looking at the solution and then once i solve the problem i would look at all the solutions inside the code discussion to see what i have missed and many other approaches were there on so this is how i like planned i solved uh, around all of those questions that is only the questions which i solved nothing more than that I used to give lead for weekly contest every week without missing because that is the benchmark for anybody uh, where you stand. Like uh, the weekly contest, there are four questions: one easy, two medium, and one hard. So I uh, so I read it in somewhere in lead for that if you can solve three questions in 20 minutes, you are good enough to like set for good product based company. So that is what I had aimed. And slowly and slowly starting, me I was like solving only one, then two. Then three like that, and then three within uh, one hour or so. So once that three months actually completed, and then luckily I got a call from PayPal, and it all fell into place basically. And uh, I gave the first round because I know it. I uh, cleared that, and it was very fast. Like yesterday, Friday I cleared that, and Saturday I got the call to have all the rounds. And within two hours they took three rounds and. Like in the evening, I knew that I was selected, so it was very fast. Oh, great! So what you are saying is, anyone who is going through their DSA prep journey, they don't, uh, they they really need to control the urge of looking at the answers. They have to yeah. just solve it on their own. That is the only way to get really better at uh, building the logic, right? That is yeah, like yeah, a yeah. great uh, piece of advice. No need to actually keep on looking for different different kind of roadmaps. You just need to follow the one, stick through it, and then yeah. things will start making sense. Great, uh, great Harsh. So you spent how many months in PayPal uh, right after, like before moving to Google? Uh, I worked for about eight months or so. But as soon as I uh, like started working at PayPal, in two or three months, I got from literally all companies. Microsoft, Amazon, Amazon Canada, UK, Facebook, uh, and Google as well. So, so while you were in PayPal, you were getting calls from all these big uh, so-called fan companies. <laughs> so yeah. uh, how did you decide that Google is the one uh, is where you want to go next? So basically, I was giving interviews throughout those eight months of PayPal in all these companies rather than working at PayPal. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, it started out with Amazon, and I had uh, so I joined PayPal in August of uh, 2021, I guess, and then I uh, got the call in uh, October for Google and Amazon at the same time. I the process of Google is pretty slow and pretty long compared to Amazon. So they have Amazon has a OA, and then you give two uh, or three rounds, uh, mm-hmm. one coding round, one design round, and one managerial round. So 
that was pretty fast and then uh, because of diwali other other uh, then i got a call from facebook as well and that dragged on till next year so it was all happening at the same time all the interviews for all the three companies and uh, i got the offer for amazon pretty quick at the end of that year and but facebook i got it in uh, 2022 jan okay. and you, also google uh, so you had the offers from amazon uh, facebook and then finally from google as well so this is uh, what i would want to know ki why did you go for google and not for those two companies uh specifically because of the process so once i went through that google process most people feel that it's very difficult and it is if you look at it in that way it is difficult because there are a lot of rounds and you have to like be perfect in almost all rounds they, they expect consistency in that way but what i like uh, felt was that after each round i was becoming a better software engineer like uh, in all other rounds like in other companies was very like robotic like i was giving an interview they were uh, asking me questions i was solving the problems and then but in case of google the questions were not the questions which we were solved in amazon mm-hmm. there was all the same questions which i probably solved somewhere or exactly similar pattern questions mm-hmm. in google it was not like that they were completely new questions and you have to really think through and that like creates or improves your intuition and i think that process helped me be- better become a better software engineer throughout those like 4 5 months and i think that was a call more so also because the all the people who were taking the interview were so humble like uh, it's so down to earth and humble and you can look at the culture directly through that and i understand and that every people in that company is so grounded so that gives a like an indication of the culture as well so accommodating both i thought that was a better opportunity Okay, so uh, Harsh, you mentioned that while preparing for PayPal uh, interview, you were consistently doing a lot of DSA questions, right? And uh, but you're saying that for the Google interview, uh, the whole process was a uh, quite uh, lengthier, right? So can you walk us through a little bit uh, that, like, how is the entire process is like uh, uh, from applying to uh, Google? Like, basically, in your case, you got a uh, call from them itself, right? But uh, आप स्टार्टिंग से बता सकते हो लाइक जब एक पूरा इंटरव्यू प्रोसेस कितना लंबा चलता है और कितने राउंड उसमें होते हैं एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम द डी एस ए पार्ट वॉट ऑल अदर एस्पेक्ट एनी एस्पायरिंग यू नो कोडर और एनी वन वॉन्ट्स टू हैव अ जॉब इन गूगल शुड डेफिनेटली लुक फॉर एंड प्रिपेयर फॉर बिफोर हैंड so it's pretty long process so once you get the call from the so i got the call from recruiter but uh, it might be that you apply and then you get shortlisted and then you get the call so uh, luckily what happened was that i was scrolling through linkedin and uh, i saw one of the posts of one of the recruiters i sent her a connection request and after few days she accepted that and probably she went through my profile and she liked it for one of her positions which she was open in a uh, so so then she reached out to me whether she i was open for an opportunity or not and then she called me up uh, she gave me a brief first call about what was the role and everything and then she, she there was a, a quick fire rapid dsa uh, round like there only just only five six questions regarding time complexity and everything it mm-hmm. it was like uh, it was it was supposed to be an introductory call but this happens with everyone so they ask a rapid fire questions the recruiter itself not any interviewer the recruiter itself and, is it related uh, sorry is it related to coding the question that they asked yeah yeah yeah. yeah 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 all were like uh, dsa time complexity related questions like this tree if you insert what is the time complexity pre order question like that very fast so in that they judge whether you are uh, okay to give the next round or not that is a basic check for them so once you are through that then they will explain you the uh, all the role profile details about that what it is uh, it's about once uh, i was through that then they scheduled a elimination round which was about so they'll ask you how much time you need to prepare so i told them about uh, two weeks and diwali was in between so i said maybe i can take three weeks off and you are okay to ask as much time as you need even if you like think you want one month you can ask them uh, they are open they'll be open to that and they'll really support you so i mm-hmm. took about two weeks of time and then the first round was scheduled first round didn't go very didn't go actually well at all 
so it was like uh, i wrote in javascript and the person who was interviewing he was not accustomed to that much javascript so i some of the things which i wrote it actually uh, spent a, i spent a lot of time explaining those javascript nuances instead of the code and the approach for the problem so it is expected that uh, they ask two questions in the elimination round and mm-hmm. you have to solve both of them with optimized time within 45 minutes so okay. so i wasn't even able to solve the first one because i because of the explanation time so i uh, didn't think that i would go through that round but i gave that feedback to my recruiter and she took it she took positively that feedback and she thought that i should deserve another chance so i got another like round scheduled about another one week from that round and then uh, uh, in in that case i solved both the questions within 45 minutes both were medium questions uh and medium like really medium questions not hard questions and this myth that google asks hard questions is not true it's only medium questions so but the thing is that you have to uh, give a optimized approach if not then you they'll probably give you a hint and you are expected to optimize that approach write mm-hmm. the code down run the test cases all the code should be uh like the clean and they expect you to write in such a way in a doc that it runs in the uh, compiler at any time so mm-hmm. you can't check for any uh, syntax errors or anything but you have to be perfect there. so this is the expectation and once you clear that round then comes the four on site rounds which again you can ask time for so i asked about two weeks for that and then i prepared for all the difficult topics uh graph related topics and related topics because uh, they generally ask questions regarding that so mm-hmm. once that uh, those four rounds were uh, like broken up into two to each so both the two were simultaneous so today mm-hmm. like suppose today one round tomorrow morning next round and then they uh, have a feedback same approach uh, 45 minutes two questions you have to solve both of them in an optimized manner exactly same and uh, once you clear those two and then there will be a feedback from those two and that will be like added up and then the recruiter will probably take a call whether you should go to the next two or not or you should drop out there only so if you drop out there then you have to apply then you can only apply after 6 months otherwise uh, if you drop out uh, before like uh, in the sorry if you drop out in the middle you have to apply after one year and if you dropped on in the elimination round you can apply again in 6 months in 6 oh. months time so oh. my like uh, review for the first two rounds of the on site were pretty good very very good so the next two rounds were scheduled simultaneously and i gave two back to back rounds and uh, one of those rounds the fourth round in the on site was okay not that great but overall uh, the review was very good so i so then they should give a googliness round which is kind of a uh, team not team fit round but uh, whether you fit the culture of google or not that mm-hmm. kind of round uh, once that is done then they create then a package of your uh, total history like where have you worked and all the feedbacks of all the rounds where you lack and that package is sent to a hiring committee in google which sits every uh, week and they this hiring committee is like four or five very top people in the company and they review a package anonymously and they understand whether this person is fit for the role which they have given him so i had applied for l4 role which is mm-hmm. like a uh, senior role so mm-hmm. with, they will understand whether you from all the feedback whether you are okay for l4 role or not if not mm-hmm. they'll think whether you are okay for l3 role or not. is downgraded level so okay. i was okay for the l4 role based on the reviews and then once that happens then the recruiter asks you uh, which team you want to prefer so if there are multiple openings in different teams they will try to set up interviews for all so google is a company where basically you're not hired for a particular com- uh, team you're hired for the company and then you can go to any team that's the difference between other companies they give you the option to choose the team you would want okay yeah yeah so i okay. had match so based on my profile i had matched in four teams i had the rounds with four managers to understand their product and uh, what that team was doing and appropriately i chose a team in google maps and uh, once i chose that then after 
one week which we had a negotiation the negotiations round with the recruiter once that was done then i got the offer so it was a long very very long process about 5 uh, months i think okay but definitely worth it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah great great harsh so i think it's been more than a year for you uh, in uh, google right so uh, our viewers obviously would want to know how your experience is working at google because people uh, you know dream of working there so can you tell us a little bit about your current experience like how is the entire uh, day like what sorts of project do you work on like whether you can just share uh, the overview of it and then how is life after you know joining sure sure, sure. so i think it's, it's been really great but uh, like once you get into google you really understand the uh, people around you like all of them are so like literally genius and you for some time also it took me some time to really settle in and understand that uh, so you have that imposter syndrome for about 3 4 months at least i had for more than that and then mm-hmm. once i was settled in to the team once i started uh, like uh, being productive uh, mm-hmm. it's about more than a year now and like i'm really settled in oh, my manager and team we are really great all the folks in the team are so good and the mm-hmm. culture is so good like uh, nobody never ask you like whether you have completed this work or not it's just on you whether you how and when you want to complete the work and mm-hmm. uh, the good thing about google is that you can work on anything so i had never imagined that i would work on android I was very pro JavaScript, and I was always thinking I'd work always in JavaScript. So once I got into the stream, I worked in like C plus plus, Java, Python, even Android in the last six months. So it's uh, you get to learn a lot of things. You get to learn a lot of things, uh, and being an L four, you get the whole piece together. So the whole project goes to you, and from end to end, you are you have the responsibility to like deliver it. So you get that responsibility as well, and the platform to like. and like go ahead in career and as a growth as well so harsh you mentioned uh, that you had uh, imposter syndrome for quite some time because people around you were so intelligent right so how did you get over it ultimately i think you just need to have that perseverance that you belong there because you've been through that process legitimately and you've been good enough in that process and that's why you are here you have to believe that and then i think after some time when you keep delivering few tasks and mm-hmm. projects or sub tasks you get that confidence and then team also helps you the folks in the team also helps you to get included and believe that so combination of both right okay so uh, harsh working in google uh, a lot of people talk about how amazing the office are <laughs> the offices are basically right and people talk a lot about you know how many food options are also available there so a lot of perks you guys get apart from working with very intelligent people around you so maybe uh, can you tell us your favorite part of working at google apart from the fact that you're able that you're working with very intelligent people or great projects or you know such a great company uh, the perks which what do you think would is your favorite part i think the food and the unlimited uh, micro kitchen things which you can take juice food chips just anything like every floor has a small micro kitchen where you have every food item which you can even imagine and you can take any amount of that at any point of time and you also have a, a ice cream crate where you can take any amount of ice cream uh, from the cafe and there are a lot of uh, cafes as well you have your own barista in two floors so you can customize your coffee every day uh, so and food is like literally uh, better than five star i would say so there's uh, many times so we think as a team to have a team lunch outside when we get disappointed after having the food outside because the food in google is better so yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, great. So, how was your parents' reaction when you finally got into Google? I think it was real. Like uh, even I couldn't believe that I was in, and same was with her, and they were really happy that uh, I got in. Okay. Great. So, um, Harsh, one thing that I would like to ask uh, is uh, that you are also a mentor here at Accio Job, uh, right? And uh, you have been mentoring uh, a lot of students here. You take their doubts, and you also uh, are you also a mock interviewer here at Accio Job? No, no. I I've taken few content discussion classes. 
okay great so uh, can you maybe uh, like share few uh, uh, insights on uh, so because we have a lot of students from tier 3 college uh, itself you know who are studying in this course so can you share a few things that they are doing wrong uh, you know while preparing uh, for dsa or any other uh, thing uh, what are things that they're doing wrong and what can they do wrong by, uh, what can they do right basically uh, for actually uh, to do better or maybe able to serve, crack the uh, product company you you can just share uh, both the things like the things that they're doing wrong and the things that they can actually work on sure. so what i see is that most people are afraid of solving dsc first first this is the biggest barrier which i see in most folks and mm-hmm. like uh, people if they are not afraid of solving, they'll probably solve the Larry strings, linked list stack. If they are really afraid of going to trees or graphs or DP, these mm-hmm. feel like really unattainable, unattainable uh, topics for them. So the mm-hmm. first step is that you have to probably believe that you can solve all problems step by step once you go through the, like, uh, the basics of, of those things, like understanding the concepts. So I think they can focus more on understanding the concepts Hmm. and then solving easy problems then solving medium problems and solving all problems on their own rather hmm. than looking at solutions so because when i uh, do that contest discussion session i understand that people are looking at understanding the uh, solution and the code for that rather than understanding the intuition behind that like how one comes to that thought of the approach what led hmm. to that thought of that approach and suppose that approach is not an optimized approach what to think next to optimize what am i lacking that observation though and that process that uh, touched in the process is not there so i would really really recommend people to take time because it might take a lot of time for some some folks some folks might take like uh, be really fast and understand things and concepts easily some might not so understand concepts take your own time nobody is in a rat race and uh, like they can take their time to solve problems on their own and have that belief that they can solve all. Hmm. Okay, great. Cool, Harsh. That is again a very useful piece of advice people can follow. So that was about uh, you know how to actually prepare, how to actually solve questions. Now let's talk a little bit about how do you actually end up you know finding uh, jobs because being from a tier three college you sort of lose hope from you know uh, companies visiting your campus so you always have to be on a lookout for great opportunities and uh, i saw on your linkedin profile as well that for uh, you know the geo uh, job that you got and the google one both you have mentioned that linkedin helped you got that job right so uh, just share few strategies for people who are on an outlook of an amazing product based company how can they do it via linkedin and what all other job portals which are available now uh, whom what they, that they can use uh, to actually land a good job sure sure so from what i understood was there are two ways to get into product based companies if you are in tier 3 first is mm-hmm. you go you take that risk you go go into a startup you work there you grind out and you learn a lot of things in a small space of time and that gives a lot of things in your resume and generally good product based companies like I've uh, I've really heard this that like companies like Atlassian and Flipkart they really prefer people from startups even if there are very small startups 50 people even 100 people 200 people startups because they know that once you're working there you have to work you have to learn and it's a grind so you know stuff Rather uh, than because they know that once you're working in pe- like teams like uh, companies like Cognizant, you probably don't work that much and you don't have those problems to solve and you don't mm-hmm. learn enough. So first part is whether you take a risk and you always get opportunities start in startup via like tier three college if you go to a, a service based company, you'll always get calls from startups and you can mm-hmm. get that from like uh, the most I've got was from AngelList. And they have a good uh, like repertoire of uh, list of starters where you can apply, give interviews, and they will shortlist you definitely if you have a decent resume. And also you can go via hireist or uh, knockery, but I don't think you get too much of those in like too much startup roles in those. You can also go via LinkedIn. LinkedIn also has a lot of openings for startups. So that is one way. And second way is you literally make that direct jump from. 
service based company to a product based company which is really difficult and i think linkedin helps a lot so you have to understand what kind of software engineer you want to become like because i was really fascinated about javascript so i was uh, learning a lot of things on the side as well uh, mm-hmm. like learning tailwind when it like landed the first version of something so you have to be really enthusiastic about what you learn and understand what kind of developer you are once you have mm-hmm. had that uh, foundation in of development because that is only which will grab the eye from linkedin for any recruiter you have to have something in your resume right which stands out so a lot of projects and the web development which you do that only will help you uh, get the limelight so i had also created one npm project which had more than 5k downloads so i had written that in my resume then i had uh, some more small projects as well which i had put out my portfolio as well uh and also done a few more projects so those all of those lined up in my resume and you should do it incrementally in such a way that you update your linkedin you update your resume you keep on doing a new project you keep on updating and you keep on applying and you have that belief that you once at a cycle you will come where one of the companies will definitely call you and you should be ready at that point because that uh, those opportunities do not come often and once you get that opportunity you should probably be ready to nail that down so these are the two ways generally you should you can and linkedin i think is the best way and what i used to do was i used to every day wake up and send 40 50 requests to random people i have a list at list of 10 20 companies where i wanted to go at that time to make that next jump not the top based company because i knew that i won't get into top based companies but the middle product based companies the for okay. access to sap or like that and i used to send request to maybe 10 recruiters and 10 engineers every day and like that you have to create that followers list and hope that either one recruiter looks into your profile or mm-hmm. one of the engineers refers you in. okay that is great piece of advice harsh i'm sure people will take note of all your uh, you know uh, strategies and they will start looking for jobs Uh, like that only uh thank you so much for uh, the insightful session harsh i'm pretty sure people will take inspiration from you uh you know it doesn't matter being from a tier 3 college you can still crack up very good product based company if you continuously you know prepare for it do projects and continuously apply for great companies you will uh, get ahead great is there anything else that you would like to uh, add or want to give any anything to the student out there uh like i want to say that i was part of hack your job and it is very good portal for people to join and learn there because they have that front end uh well a thing also and also back end with psa and a lot there are a lot of good mentors as well so i want to give a shout out to them thank you thank you so much harsh i think uh, many people who are from non tech background and tier uh, 3 college not uh, you know because they can start from you know youtube but then uh, the platform where they can find people who can solve their doubts who can mentor them who can actually take them mock interviews uh, not all of that options are available on youtube so i think uh, that's where coding boot camps play a huge role and that's how we are also trying to help people right uh, okay cool so that will be all from our end uh, hope you guys liked the session if you did please like and share the video and don't forget to comment down below your queries so that we will be covering in our next video and if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notification for all our upcoming videos and yeah thank you harsh